Hi everyone, this time I will talk about manual shifting, how to gear properly and how to choose the right gear for the right corner or the right situation. This might sound a subject for a novice, but I was surprised to see how many people are actually still using automatic gears or simply don't get the full advantage of manual shifting. It is preferable to use manual shifting over the automatic one because it gives you more control over your car and it will help you not only to be faster, but it will help you during specific racing situations like, for example, tires are worn and you need to control the oversteer on corner exit or when you need to save fuel. The majority of those using automatic gears are usually using a controller because, of course, with shifting with the steering wheel feels more natural. But as I said again, I also saw a lot of people shifting manually but losing too much time because they don't know how to shift uh, in such a way to maximize their speed. I won't talk about shifting with the H-shifter because uh, I don't have one, but even if I did, uh, that would have been another beast altogether, especially if we are talking about shifting using the clutch. First things first, if you are using a controller, I'll strongly suggest you to set up your controls so they are comfortable to you. You can stick with the basic Square and X, but back in those days when I was using a controller, uh, I made the choice to use L1 to upshift and Square to downshift. I did that because I was more comfortable using the left hand to upshift while I was accelerating with the right index finger, and the other way around for braking and downshift. That was my choice at the time, and I'm not suggesting to you to directly follow that, but what I do suggest is to find a combination of control that allows you to upshift and accelerate simultaneously with ease, uh, as well as braking and decelerate. Going to the meat of the content, I will talk about upshifting first. Most of the time, the best moment to upshift is when the rev counter at the bottom of the screen is at its peak and just starts to blink. This is to allow to maximize the acceleration and the power of the engine when the next gear has engaged. This clip will show you instead what happens when you shift too early. When this happens, you will notice a huge decrease in acceleration because the initial speed of the car is lower, uh, so the engine needs more force to carry the car instead of relying on the momentum and at speed on top of that. It is noticeable also in the way the RPM are slowly increasing at the bottom of the screen, as well as the top speed reached. An approach that you could take uh, when you're pushing to the limit is to over-rev in the car. This consists in delaying the upshift to squeeze every bit of acceleration from the engine. This cannot be done every time, and not for every car, especially when fuel consumption is a factor, but it might help you to get the edge over the car in front. Be aware though that you can't overwrap the car too much. Uh, you will see in the next clip the consequence of delaying the upshift for too long. The result is a huge power loss with a consequent loss of time. As far as downshifting goes, the best way to approach it is to have a certain rhythm and not trying to be too impatient and downshift too fast. Uh, because you need to follow the decreasing speed from the car. If you downshift when the speed is too high, the car over revs and might unsettle, making it less controllable. Speaking of downshifts, uh, we need to understand, of course, uh, which is the right gear for the right corner. The rule of thumb is that the slower the corner, the lower the gear. So hairpins are usually made in second, faster corners in third, and so on. This of course depends on the car, how many gears they have, how fast they can go in certain corners, uh, so there's a huge uh, amount of variables involved, but what you could do is to make a couple of experiments and analyze how the car behaves so you can judge which gear to use uh, each time. In the following example I will use the same car and approach the corner from 1st to 5th gear to analyze how the car behaves when the gear is too low, what happens when the gear is too high, and uh, when there's the grey area when uh, you need to make a choice depending on your driving style. Approaching the corner in first gear, you can clearly see that the car over revs straight away and too easily on the exit of the corner. This means that the gear is definitely too low as the car is too prone to lose control and the speed is severely limited by the top end of the gear. Approaching the corner in second, we can see instead that we can make the corner better. Uh, we could definitely use this gear during our laps. Uh, there's a good amount of acceleration on exit, but at the same time we are limiting the amount of speed we are carrying through the corner, and on top of that we need to be more careful with the throttle, as we need to prevent oversteer on exit. We are trying now to use third gear. Uh, the car tends to understand a bit more compared to second, but we can carry more speed mid corner, and uh, we are less scared about oversteer on exit. Uh, this though comes at the cost uh, of a bit of acceleration compared to second. 
Using fourth gear, we are starting to see that maybe this gear is too high. We tend to have less control on corner entry and the acceleration on exit is severely damaged. We are trying eventually to use fifth gear, uh, where all the problems mentioned above are even more clear. Uh, the car barely moves on exit. What we just saw is that when you need to pick a gear for a corner, uh, you need to find the right balance between car control, mid-corner speed and acceleration. But sometimes none of the gears are too good. If you can't fiddle with the setups, uh, you might be forced to use a trick that may give you the best of both worlds. This consists in shifting to the lower gear on entry to increase car control and minimize understeer, and as soon as you are approaching corner exit, shift up to minimize the oversteer. Another trick that is very important in those races where fuel management is a factor is short shifting. This means that you shift early on purpose to save fuel. That's a strategy that I normally use to save fuel in those races instead of fiddling with the fuel mixers, because at least in GT Sport it's very effective. Uh, this comes uh, of course at the cost of power, but you will lose some time anyway with the lower fuel mixers. The time loss can also be minimized if you are for example following closely another car, because the slipstream of the car in front makes up for the power you lose by short shifting. That's it for now. If you enjoyed, please check out the rest of my videos. I'm giving you tips and advices to race on GT Sports, uh, but those could also be helpful for other racing games. I'll see you next time. Bye.